So they did this night and day for, I think, four days and saved Blinus Lagoon. Then uh, they began uh, washing, uh, raking up the oil and washing birds. They washed, I think, 980 seabirds in, in mineral oil. Each bird took them three to four hours to wash. And during this time, Standard Oil finally came and offered them 75 cents an hour, I think. And the kids said to Standard Oil, you like your money so well, you keep your money. <laughs> oh, you like it so much. So a couple of weeks later, I was walking on the shore and I saw a seal that had been killed by kerosene derivatives and oil derivatives which get in the liver and nothing can be done for them. I had a piece of paper with me and I wrote down this little poem. Walking north toward the point, I come in a dead seal. From a few feet away, he looks like a bound log. He's lying on his back, dead only a few hours. I stand and look at him. There's a quiver in the dead flesh. My God, he's still alive. And a shock goes through me as if a wall of my room had fallen away. He's lying on his back, the small head back, the whiskers sometimes rise and fall. He's dying. This is the oil. Here on its back is the oil that heats our houses so efficiently. Wind blows fine sand back toward the ocean. The flipper near me lies folded over the stomach, looking like an unfinished arm, lightly glazed with sand at the edges. And the other flipper lies half underneath, the seal's skin looks like an old overcoat, scratched here and there by sharp muscle shells, maybe. So I reach out and touch him. Suddenly he rears up, turns over, gives three cries, arr, 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 like the cries from Christmas stories, and he lunges toward me. I'm terrified and leap back, although I know there can be no teeth in that jaw. He starts flopping toward the sea, but he falls over on his face. He does not want to go back to the sea. He looks up at the sky and he looks like an old lady who has lost her hair. He puts his chin back down in the sand, rearranges his flippers and waits for me to go. I go. So the next day, I come back to say goodbye. He's dead now, but he's not. He's a quarter mile farther up the shore. Today he's thinner, squatting on his stomach with the head out, the ribs show more. Each vertebrae in the back underneath the coat is visible, shiny. He breathes in and out. A wave comes in, touches his nose, he turns and looks at me. The, the eyes are slanted. The back of his head looks like a boy's leather jacket. He's taking a long time to die. The whiskers white as porcupine quills, the forehead slopes. Goodbye, brother. Die in the sound of waves. Forgive us if we have killed you. Long live your race, your inner tube race, so uncomfortable on land, so comfortable in the water. Be comfortable in death then, when the sand will be out of your nostrils and you can swim in long loops through the pure death, ducking under as assassinations break above you. You don't want to be touched by me. I climb the cliff and go home the other way.